Good morning, everyone. Today we see Jesus at a crossroads in his ministry. Until this time, he had crowds of followers, people who had witnessed his miracles of healing, the multiplying of food when they were hungry, and they clung to his every word. But, and this was right before the gospel we heard then, Jesus said, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. This message was quite shocking and unpopular. In an instant, Jesus had become more demanding in their lives and more confusing too. The crowd simply cannot grasp the concept that Jesus is, as, of Jesus' flesh as bread. And as a result, many of them decided to walk away. We even heard in the gospel that some of his disciples were murmuring among themselves. And this caused Jesus to ask them. And we can almost hear a little bit of sadness in his voice. In his voice. Do you also want to leave? Comprehending Jesus' real presence in the Eucharist, as well as his real presence in our lives, begins with a decision. A decision to believe. To believe that Jesus is who he says he is, the Son of God and God himself. Throughout the Gospels, we see the faith of the disciples begin to take shape as they begin to believe more and more in Jesus and put his teachings into practice. But the crowd in the gospel today, they decided something different. They closed their hearts and turned their backs. You see, believing is easy when it doesn't cost much or require anything of us. It's easy when it doesn't challenge our worldview. But it's difficult decisions that really say something about your belief system, what you value, and your faith. It's the difficult decisions that reveal who you are. In the first reading today, we saw the, all of the, the tribes of Israel gathered together. They gathered together after they had completed the conquest of the promised land. And we see Moses' successor, Joshua, standing at their head, and he puts to them a question. He calls them to a decision point. He says, who are you going to follow? The Lord God of heaven and earth who brought you out of Egypt and did all these mighty deeds and is giving you this land? Or... Are you going to follow the false gods who are here? The people of Israel, they say that they will, but the Bible doesn't end there. We know what happens after that. And so it is for, for us, for you and me. At some point, we have to make a definitive decision Am I going to follow Jesus or not? But it doesn't end there because that decision needs to be lived out day in and day out and it needs to be chosen afresh again and again and again. And when we go astray, as of course we will from time to time, well then we need to be called and return back. You know, that's why God sends prophets. God sends prophets to call back his people when they go astray. Today we are continuing our summer, actually we're ending, we're ending our Summer of Saints message series. And today we're exploring the life of St. Catherine of Siena. St. Catherine of Siena was a prophet. A prophet who called back God's church and God's people when they went astray. She lived in the 14th century and a historian described her time like this. A time of turmoil, diminished expectations, loss of confidence in institutions, 
and feelings of helplessness at forces beyond human control. Does that sound familiar? It's like it could be written about today. And that's exactly how we felt when we saw the, the images coming out of Afghanistan and so much more. But St. Catherine never lost hope, and neither should we. Because as St. Catherine reminds us, this is a quote from hers, out of darkness is born the light. Out of darkness is born the light. St. Catherine was the 24th of 25 children. So even our big families have some catching up to do. <laughs> From a young age, Catherine decided that she wanted to devote her life to Christ. But her parents at a certain point had a different plan. They wanted her to marry, ideally to a husband who would improve their financial and social status. It's funny, one time they were trying to marry her off and Catherine ran and cut off all of her hair so she'd be less desirable. <laughs> oh, okay, maybe, I don't know. I thought that, okay. <laughs> Stick with the script. <laughs> However, Catherine insisted that she consecrate her virginity to Christ. Now, she lived at the height of the bubonic plague, and she would go into homes and hospitals, and she would care for those that no one else would. She would wash and bandage their hideous wounds, and when they died, she would bury them with her own hands. And seeing her example led others to begin and do likewise. St. Catherine's concern even extended to the church, because at this time, in a particular way, the church was sick. Sick with decadence, politics, and war. This part of the church's history is often called the Babylonian exile. It's the 70 year period when the popes lived in France instead of in Rome. And further, there was strife everywhere. So St. Catherine, she wrote a trove of letters to leaders at all levels of society, inside the church and outside the church, urging peace. She would travel from city to city to try to reconcile warring parties, and so they called her a tireless dove of peace. St. Catherine even made it to Avignon, France, to urge and convince Pope Gregory XI to return to Rome. Where everyone else had failed, St. Catherine's burning words overcame all opposition. Unfortunately, we still see sickness in the church today. The remnants of the abuse crisis, financial corruption, abuse of power, ambiguous teaching, and more. When we encounter evil in the church, and when we encounter evil in the ministers of God's church, we have a decision to make. We can be like the so many who have left, and maybe there are some in our own families, and again, we can, we can hear that, that sadness in Jesus' voice as he says, are you going to go away too? Or, or we can be like St. Catherine of Siena. St. Catherine who saw the church not as a flawed human institution, but as the bride of Christ, and who prayed and who worked for the purification of its leaders. Soon before St. Catherine died at age 33, she was worn out from all of her labors. She prayed that the Lord might take her heart and squeeze it out over the church to wash it clean. And now from, from heaven, St. Catherine's work continues today. And we see it. We see it each time someone decides to follow Christ. 
We see it each time someone decides to take a next step on their discipleship path. We see it here in our own community. I want to invite you to to be a part of this renewal. We're seeing it here and now. Next Sunday, so a week from today, at 6 p.m., we're going to gather at Our Lady of Fatima for prayer and for praise, a period of prayer and praise. And then after that, I'm going to share my vision for our parish. I'd love for you not just to join us, but to be a part of it. One of St. Catherine's most memorable quotes is this. Be who God created you to be, and you'll set the world on fire. Be who God created you to be, and you will set the world on fire. That might seem like a daunting task, but the choice is yours. You could be like the crowd in the gospel who chose to leave, or you could be like the disciples and St. Catherine who chose to stay. Because it's our decisions that shape who we are and who we want to be. And it's what we choose that has a profound impact on others. Our time, like St. Catherine's time, is a dark time. But we can take comfort in some of St. Catherine's words. St. Catherine said, to the servant of God, every time is the right time. And every place is the right place. And those words are meant for us, here and now. So why don't we unite our prayers to St. Catherine? Right now, let's bow our heads in prayer to God. Father, you create light where there is darkness. Bring your light to the dark places of our lives, the dark places of our world, to those who are suffering in Afghanistan, in Haiti, and even here from this storm. And we ask you to renew your church, the bride of Christ. We ask you to bless us that we may make our decision firm to follow you so that we might be who you've created us to be and set the world on fire. Amen.